Hello, friends. Welcome to another edition of Remnant Informer Presents The Alleged Immaculate Conception and Sinlessness of Mary. Certainly, I have no interest in being offensive to Roman Catholics, and I most certainly have no interest in saying anything negative about Mary. Truly, she is blessed among women, but not venerated above women in all humanity. The biblical fact of the matter is that Mary was in a sin nature just as all other human beings do. That is not to say that Mary was a bad person or that she was a bad a sinner as every other sinner. But she definitely had a sin nature and was in, in need of a Savior. She knew this to be true of herself. Luke 1 and 47. It is the consent testimony of Scripture that every single human being with the one exception of Jesus Christ whose conception was by the Holy Spirit Luke 1 and 35 has been born into this world with a sin nature. Romans 5.12 tells us that through one man's sin entered the world and death through sin and so death spread to all men because all have sinned. We are assured that all have sinned and fell, fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and 23. There is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. There is none who does good. There is not even one. Romans 3, 10 through 12. There is not a righteous man on earth who continually does good and who never sins. Ecclesiastes seven twenty. Jesus himself asserted, no one is good except God alone. Luke 18 and 19. Scripture indicates that Mary was in need of redemption, as are all other, other people. Luke 1, 47. She even presented an offering to the Jewish priest as prescribed arising out of her state of sin. Luke 2, 22 through 24. And you can also read Leviticus 12. The implication is clear. Mary is not holy by nature. My words here should not be taken as an attack against Mary. They should be taken as a simple affirmation that Mary, as just like the rest of us when it comes to being a sinner, is in need of a Savior. Did you know that Mary's alleged sinlessness was not proclaimed as dogma by the Roman Catholic Church until A.D. 1547. If this doctrine were really true, don't you think it would be reflected in the pages of Scripture? As opposed to emerging over 1,500 years after the fact. On a historical note, it is highly revealing that it was not until the Council of Trent in A.D. 1547 that the Roman Catholic Church proclaimed the sinlessness of Mary as dogma. Further, most of the significant doctrines concerning Mary have been promulgated in little more than the past hundred years. If these doctrines were really true, then they would be reflected in the pages of Scripture, as opposed to emerging over 15 years after the fact. Now, I just want to go on record that I'm not trying to attack the Roman Catholic Church. I'm just trying to present the truth of the word. That Mary, just like the rest of us, was a sinner. She was born into sin. She didn't have to be sinless in order to keep Jesus from being sinless. Jesus came down as a man as one of us took on our very nature. See, through him and his example, we can learn that we can live a sinless life. He could have easily have sinned as the rest of us. Remember that Satan has tempted him in the wilderness. If it was not so that he was to sin, he would not have been tempted. There's a clue there. Jesus did not sin because his very character reflects 
the Ten Commandments. But he could have easily sinned just like the rest of us. But he showed us how it could be done. Through Jesus Christ, we could live a sinless life. Nothing had to be done but prior to that to keep Jesus from being sinless. I hope you can understand what the Word is saying. And you will follow it, you will study this topic, and come to the clear understanding of what God's Word is saying to you. And uh, thanks for watching. As always, I stand by the Word. God bless.